The seriousness of this video is an illustration not to be tried at home. Seek professional advice. But the illustrations we're going to read about in the Bible are to show the seriousness of sin. And there's nothing more conclusive that the subjects at hand than what we're going to read. Numbers, I mean, excuse me, Leviticus 14.40, we're talking about leprosy. And leprosy has entered into a house. Now, before we read the illustration, I would advise to get a home inspector, <laughs> a carpenter, someone who is knowledgeable and licensed and insured before you go start doing anything to your building. But a man has found and the priest has looked at Leprosy has entered into the man's house, in his walls. Leviticus 14, 40, and the priest shall command that they take away the stone in which the plague is. They shall cast them out in an unclean place without the city. So, here is leprosy in a house. The priest and the law tells the homeowner, Get rid of those rocks. Get those rocks to the dump. Get to those rocks where it's unclean. Take those rocks and that leprosy, get it out of here. Now, leprosy in the Bible is a type of sin. And when you read about leprosy in 13 and 14, Read about, knowledge about, think about sin. You know, sin can get into your house. Your spouse and children. It can also get into the wall. It can get into the furniture. I'm reminded of as a young child growing up that there was a fire in a building and the building went up it was an old building and they asked the fire chief or the battalion chief somebody in charge what on earth made this building spread like that it was quick and the, the a fire official said that long time ago, many years, that that building had been a bar. And they served drinks. And that the fact is the alcohol absorbed itself into the wood. And alcohol burns. This man... If he wants to keep his property, wants to keep his house disease free, he's got to take those stones out that has leprosy. And any, I would assume, any stones nearby. When a doctor says it's cancer, my wife had breast cancer. I don't know exactly where in the breast it was. It was a larger than size cell lump or whatever it was. They had to remove the whole breast. I said, and I asked, well, I can't go and take that spot out. And he said, it may have gone to other cells. It's the best thing that they have studied and look at is you remove the whole area. You've got to remove the sick 
you got to remove the disease. You've got to have a professional look at the situation. And it tells you also, verse 45, And he shall break down the house, the stones of it, the timber thereof, and all the mortar of the house. He shall carry them forth out of the city into a clean place. I mean, unclean place. All right, he has taken the rocks out. He is rebuilt. And the leprosy comes back. Leprosy was hiding somewhere else in the house. Like I said, leprosy could be hiding in your body. And that's why they take all they can take out. Here's a case. He cleaned up the house. He cleaned up the material. And the leprosy was there still. Now the whole entire house has to be. You know, sin can take hold of you. Alcohol, I seen it. Alcohol can take care take hold of you. And when you're done with alcohol, you've gone to the grave. Your entire family, your employer, your co-workers, other people have been destroyed because of your alcohol drink. People with tobacco, they smoke tobacco, they find that secondhand smoke gives you cancer. When it comes to sin, you got to cut it out. You can't play with it, you can't toy with it. Sin is like that boa constrictor. He's wrapped around you, and every time you inhale, he squeezes more. And you inhale, and he squeezes more. One time you're going to try to exhale, you can't. That boa constrictor's got you wrapped where you can't breathe. Death. So this leprosy, a type of sin, cut it out. Leviticus 13, 56. Leviticus 13, 56. Now there's leprosy in a garment. And the priest shall look, behold, the plague is somewhat dark after the washing of it. Then he shall rend it out of the garment or out of the skin. And it's uh, animal. Out of the war. Out of the wolf. Here's an item of clothing that's got leprosy. It has been washed. It has been clean. And the priest looks at it. It's still got leprosy. You get yourself scissors or a knife. You cut it out of that garment. You cut it out of that hide. Sin. Has to be cut out. Before it's too late. I used to smoke. I started smoking when I was a freshman in school. I smoked to the late 1990s. All right, I quit smoking. I've only had a couple of cigarettes since the late 1990s. Foolishly. I've got emphysema COPD. That's not going. Hey, I quit the smoking. Thank God. Glory to God. I quit smoking. Emphysema don't quit until I'm dead. I'm right now, I'm not on oxygen all the time. I am on oxygen as I need. I got breathers. I got medications. Sometimes I just got to sit down and I, I got to concentrate on my breathing. Boa constrictor, sin. Sin. All right, never mind. I worked for a submarine builder and I, I used to clean out uh, furnaces and all that. No, no, no. Most of it is it's the smoking. Most of it is sin. Most of it when I worked for the submarine builder, most of it when I cleaned people's furnaces, I didn't read I didn't wear a respirator. Sin. I've been told. I've been knowledge, I've been skilled, I've been trained how to use rep uh, respirators. Yeah, said it wrong. The different colors is different filters. I didn't use it. I was told. You gotta cut the sin out. You got to cut the sin out. 
One, one day I'll get you. All right. Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. 2. Verse 1. Proverbs 23. 1. When thou sittest eat with a ruler, your boss, mayor, police chief, police captain, your lieutenant, maybe the president of the United States, maybe the king of England, maybe the czar of Russia, maybe the prime minister, you are sitting down with somebody of authority. Consider diligently what is before thee, what's at the table, and put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. Be not desirous of his dainties and all the little fancy foods, for they are deceitful meat. They say, listen, you're sitting in front of somebody important, and you're a pig. You got an appetite. You can't have just one chip. You can't have one piece of a candy bar. You got to have it all. You can't have just one jelly bean. You'll go for seconds, thirds, and fourths, and fifths. You can walk out of that buffet like you're going to explode. It's called gluttony. Now, don't put a knife to your throat, but the illustration is, you better slit your, foot, your, your, your throat. Don't do it. That's the seriousness of the matter. Solomon's saying, listen, it'd be better if you cut your throat and you show that leader. That guy's a pig. That guy's a glut. You know, that's one of the charges they put up falsely against Jesus. This man's a glutton. He's a wine biddler. I don't think Jesus overeat. And there are sins you have to remove the boulders, the wood, the nails, whatever it is, the tobacco, the women, the bottles, the can. You got to remove it. There are sins you have to cut out. There are sins that you, don't do it, don't do it, but there are sins, you may put, put a knife to your throat, get ready to cut your throat. Don't do it. i got to put that warning, don't do it. But that's the severity of sin. Don't commit suicide, don't. But, you know, in some cases, I have met people who are so engross with alcohol and they are saved. They are having a drink and they are seriously crying to God as they drink. They push it off then they grab it back. My smoking, one of the times I wanted to quit smoking, I told my wife, Lisa, I, uh, she worked a different shift than I did. I said, honey, I says, put these cigarettes somewhere where I can't find them. And only absolutely, absolutely do you tell me where those cigarettes are or until you get home from work. I would go through the house, I'd go through the ashtrays, I would make a cigarette, I would smoke the butts of cigarettes, I'd call her Crying. Please tell me where those cigarettes are. Please. And when she come home, I'd be in tears and I was smoking and said, here. And there'd be a couple of cigarettes taken out of my ear. I know. I'm taking cigarettes. I put them on the church altar. I'm going out to the car and stopped at the convenience store and got another pack.
and entangled you and ensnared you. The world calls it an addiction. The Bible calls it sin. Why can't you get addicted to Bible reading? Why can't you get addicted to scripture memorization? Why can't you get addicted to prayer? Why can't you get addicted to getting the gospel out? Why do you got to get addicted to Satan and the worldly means of your flesh? And there's numerous sins of all natures the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. You got to cut it out. You got to remove it. You got to put a knife to yourself. Don't don't do it. That's the illustration. Now, there's an illustration in the Bible that Jesus says, "Take my body and, and eat my flesh and drink my blood." That is not. And Jesus even tell you tells you it's spiritual. That is not to be taken literal as the Catholics and the Lutherans do. Because that violates the Bible. Listen, the, the rule of illustrations and how severe do I take it or is it a, an example is if it violates the scriptures, if it violates the do right, and it's an illustration. There's a time that Jesus, I mean, that God said he's Jesus. Go to Bethel and transgress. No, no, that's what God said. Can you take that and say, okay, God said go to Bethel and I can go sin. I'm going to go to the Holy Land. I'm going to Bethel. I'm going to sin. Is that, can you take that literal? No, that's God's sarcasm. That's God's illustration. That's what you're doing. Sin is so serious. That garment, and maybe it's your favorite garment. You gotta cut that out. But it's my favorite. It was it cost so much. It was given to me. Ah, you gotta cut it out. Oh, I just love my house. I worked all these years for this house. I got everything just right. My wife has got it paid. Uh, uh, you got to get rid of that. Don't do it. Put a knife to your throat. If you're in gluttony, it's going to get you. Your boss will look at you. Man, if I can't trust him at, at the... At the restaurant table, how can I trust him with my goods? If that guy can't put a restriction on his diet, they're watching you. The world is watching you. If something is an extra piece of pie. The fourth or fifth getting up at the buffet. You know what the sin is. You know where the line is. You know where you cross it. Too many people, they'll cross that line of sin and they'll do what the football players do when they cross the touchdown line. And they do the little dance. And they know what you're supposed to be doing. Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Don't do it. Tell you already, don't do this. But it's an illustration by Jesus. I wish this Bible was red letter. I don't know if Scofield, any of the Scofield Bible. I got this Bible here. <coughs> Just before I started school. I didn't know what the whole idea of the red letters was. I do now. So, Matthew 5. Now, Jesus got done talking about divorce. 
He talked about adultery. It says verse 28, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after, looked at, he just looked, that's all he did, pornography. He took that second or third look at that woman walking down the street. He let his eyes wander to the women with the bathing suits. The eyes of, of the women picture on the computer screen or on the television. There are certain bars you can go. You see, you may not have a problem with jelly beans. The glutton. You may have a problem with butts, breasts, and legs. That may be your candy. That may be your buffet. And you don't have to touch. You don't have to go into bed. You don't have to go into your, a, a bedroom. You don't have to go into a hotel or motel room. All, Jesus said 528 imagine. All you got to do is look at it. Take that second look, David. But it's not going to be worth it. So he says, who's ever looking upon a woman to lust after? That's the danger. That's the danger of pornography. And her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, I mean, that right eye is looking at the women. Oh. Ooh, look at that. Wow. Hey, babe. You're looking at that woman at work. That's why she dresses like that. Christian. Don't do it. If that right eye offend thee, pluck it out. Don't do it. But that's the illustration. Jesus said, you got a problem with your right eye? It's looking at things it shouldn't be doing? Pop that eyeball. You got a problem with the internet? Unplug it. You got a problem with the television set? Call the cable company or, or the set, whatever you have. Say, get rid of it. You got a problem with your phone? Go get an old-fashioned flip phone. You got a problem with the pornography? Don't go by the magazine section. Like the drunk. Don't keep walking by the bar you used to visit. Find another way. Jesus said that right eye. Pluck it out. Solomon said, if you give it to the appetite, you better put a knife to you. Don't do it. Don't do it. But that's the illustration. If that garment has leprosy, cut it out after you washed it. After you put it under the blood, you confessed it, and you have been forgiven, you have been cleansed, and you do it again, you better cut it out. All right, you got rid of that sin. You got you took the rocks to the unclean place. You got victory. But where you live, where you work, maybe who you're living with, maybe you got to get rid of it. I know one, I'm going to say it. I know one Chris, he drives a beer truck. You need to get rid of that. Oh, it may look good now. The pay may be good. But you wait till the payday of that sin comes knocking. And if you got a problem with your eye, don't do it. Don't do it. But Jesus said, it'd be just, just as better. Pluck that eye, but don't do it. Oh. That's the severity. And cast it from thee, for it is proper for thee that one of thy members be, should perish, and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. He's talking to unsaved people. He says, listen, there are people who are going to go to hell because of what their right eye is doing. Their right eye won't have the heart. 
to believe and trust in Jesus. Because they're going to, they know, they know they have to get up that sin. That man's going to ruin his reputation when he sits down with a meal. And listen, it don't have to be food. I have seen in a lifetime, and even me, like I said, I used to smoke. I used to smoke. You, you get one person, can I blow my cigarette off you? Yeah. By the end of the day, your cigarette pack is almost empty, and you haven't smoked. That guy keeps coming back. Can I, can I blow my cigarette? I'll give you, I'll give you money. Can I blow my cigarette? Man, you've reached your limit. Well, that was some good pie. Grab another piece. We're all good. It's all gone. You ate the whole thing, you big. I don't need to get rid of those rocks. I don't need to move. I don't need to leave that job. Okay. When sin comes knocking on the door, Cain, you may not answer it, but it will come walking in. You got a problem with sex with women? Or if you're a woman with men? You definitely got a problem with sex if you're a man and a man or a woman and a woman. That's definitely that's an abomination. But, you know, man, you going out with a few extra women than you should have? One day. Hi, man. There I go. Hi. Who are you? Are you such and such? Yeah, that's me. Who are you? I'm your daughter. I'm your son, Dad. What? You remember you remember this woman? My mom? You remember that time you were at that Baptist convention? The preacher's convention? That woman you took into the hotel room that nobody knew about? Yeah, yeah, preachers do that. Preachers go to those conventions. They rent. They rent X-rated movies. They go to the to the strip club. They, uh, yeah, yeah, I've heard it. It'll get you. You think those skeletons in the closet? Problem is, those skeletons in the closet got the light on, and they can see under the door. Jesus goes on to further. He said, "Thy right hand offend thee." Are you doing something with your right hand you shouldn't be doing? Cut it off. Don't do it. Don't do it. Physically, don't do it. Whatever sin that's in your right hand or your right eye, get rid of that sin. I got a problem with diabetes. Mostly my sin of gluttony. Look at that. I'm preaching about gluttony. I, I, I'm a sinner of gluttony. You know what God had to do? He took the Bible. He took the Bible literal. I've had two or three foot doctors <clears throat> remove three of my toes. And I don't know how you say it, but two or three pieces of my foot. I'm not, I don't know how you say it. When they removed one of my toes, they took. They had to go back and take more of that area out. I had in my other foot, I had an infection inside my foot, the middle of my foot. Hey, you don't want, you don't want to control that sugar? All right, I'll take a couple toes. You don't want to control that, that that sugar? I'll mess your kidney up. You want to smoke all those years? Here's emphysema, COPD. I didn't know that was all going to happen. My other wife, Tracy, died of lung cancer. And she said, you know, who do you think you are telling me quit smoking? And get angry because I prayed to the Lord about it, and and get angry when you know when she go to the store go get it. Uh, she knew it was wrong. She toyed with it. 
She sat in the doctor's office, and she tried to hide from me that she'd, she'd actually given up smoking. She was so mad with me. She couldn't even tell me that she actually was giving up smoking for the second time in her life. When she gave up the first time, something so stupid got her smoking again. And then the doctor told her it was lung cancer, and she's like, well, I don't want nobody to revive me. I don't want anybody to take care of me. You know, I don't want to live with the fact is that you were right and I was wrong. You should have removed those stones. You should have cut that out. You knew I quit smoking. And listen, I've got emphysema. Now, don't cut out your, your right arm. Don't pluck your eyeball out. But do you see the severity? Don't put a knife and cut your throat. But do you see the severity, that sin, that the Bible says, oh, this... There are people out there who are so immersed in their sin. They have murdered their children, their spouses, a pet. So they can continue in their sin because all that was disturbing them. And one of the causes is, I was playing a video game. And I beat the kid because he peed his diaper or whatever it is. Yeah, those things happen. Don't interrupt me in my sin. It got serious. It got wrapped around you. You didn't get rid of it. You didn't cut it out. You didn't pluck it out. And listen, as I'm going through this message, we got one more Bible verse. I'm preaching to myself. I'm a sinner, saved by grace. I've got sins in my life. And brother, I paid and will pay and going to pay more. The wages of sin is death was written to Christians. I know we use it for lost people. Uh, Mark 9, last one, Mark 9. Mark chapter 9, 42, last one, you just, you're deceiving somebody, you make them think, oh, say this prayer, you deceive children, with fantasy and witchcraft and worldliness and movies and the devil and trunk or tree or whatever it is. You have deceived the children of God. You're the Jehovah Witnesses and you grab newly saved Christians. Whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, they're saved. It is better for him that a millstone be hanged about his neck and be cast into the sea. Don't do it. But the old expression I grew up, it'd be better for the mafia to give you cement shoes. Preacher, pastor, Sunday school teacher, television evangelist, radio evangelist, if you're going to deceive the children of God, you better go be floating with the fish than to deceive. It's not necessarily if you remove, if you wash and it comes back and you got to cut it out. It's not really that bad when you got to remove the stone and then you got to remove all of it. It's not so bad you pluck out your eye 
or cut off your left hand. Don't do it. But if you were to put a knife to your throat, don't do it. Or tie a rope around your neck with, with a cement block, don't do it. And cast yourself into sea. Those two are death. You know, there are two ways you can die early as a Christian. or uh, you Actually, a lost man, too. You can die partaking in the Lord's Supper unwillingly and no regard to the Lord's Supper. And you can just keep sinning, keep sinning, keep sinning, and eventually your cup gets full and God says, okay, Smoking will give you an early death. Alcohol will give you an early death. Sex with the wrong people will give you an early death. Being where you're not supposed to be will give you an early death. Or will give you amputation. Give you loss of family, loss of money, loss of reputation, loss of job, loss. Remove that sin, do that. Cleanse yourself of that sin, do that. Cut out that sin, do that. The other illustrations we gave, don't do that, but that's just the seriousness of sin. That's the seriousness that Solomon, God with the law, Jesus Christ, gave us.